I love the de-influencing trend. So here are all the things that I will de-influence you from buying as somebody that spends thousands of dollars a year on health, beauty, hair products but loves to save a buck. Hi, Dr. Phil, my name's Alyssa. Back in January, I saw the de-influencing trend starting on TikTok, so I decided to post my own video, not thinking that it would get nearly six million views. Why are we spending $20 on lip gloss? Literally any of their lip glosses, they're like two to $5, I promise you, just as good. I decided to post the video because I love shopping for a good deal, a good sale, a good dupe for really expensive products. This is probably the worst thing TikTok ever made me buy. And for $13, I'm still salty about it. The newest trend in social media influencing is de-influencing, where influencers tell their followers why they should not buy a product. But many say that's just a savvy way of influencers sidestepping the backlash against overconsumption and taking advantage of a new way of influencing people to spend. Now, Lissa recently ventured into de-influencing. I don't think that word was ever even used until a few months ago. She's joining us virtually, so thank you for being here. Thank you, Dr. Phil, for having me. So you're finding products that you th think do just as well, generic brands or other brands that you test out and, and think they're just as good as the high price version, and you're telling people about that, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm definitely a deal shopper, and so when I find something that works just as well as the more expensive product, I, I want to share it with people because I, you know, I think there is an overconsumption product problem, especially on TikTok, and you know, we're just kind of starting to de-influencing trend, right? So how are people responding to this? I would say it's like 98% positive. People saying that they need more of this on the app. People saying that they've been waiting for this to happen because there's just like this rampant overconsumption on TikTok. I mean, there's a new trendy product every, feels like 48 hours. And, you know, the average consumer can't keep up with that. And it's just, you know, it makes you feel kind of like you're out of trend and you're not very cool when you can't afford to buy like a $60 water cup. So, yeah, for the most part, it's been a very positive reaction. And, you know, I wasn't expecting this to kind of blow up, but, you know, I'll keep at it as long as I can. Here's an example of one of Elise's uh, de influencing videos that she let us show. Starting off with any type of brush dryer, these are so terrible for your hair. If you want to break your hair off, go for it. Um, I will not be expanding on this. No amount of influencing could ever convince you that I need a multi-cooker. What the hell is a multi-cooker? Oh, and before I forget, this razor brand. It's like dragging sandpaper on my legs. It, no, even if it was free, I wouldn't use it. Wow, so you're, you're telling people ahead of time. Uh, and then you yeah. offer alternatives. Like there's a really popular blush that's going around and it's like $45 and it's always sold out. But I bought one from CVS for $4.99 that honestly I think is better. I have both. So I'm like, I just, I need to share this. And yeah, people are purchasing it and coming back and telling me like I bought it and I thank you so much. Like you saved me 50 bucks. So, so you feel good about that. You I feel, do. Would you pay attention to something like that? I would. Even if it, I mean, it, it's, it's not like glamorous. She's not mm -hmm. saying like, this is the thing to have. You're saying this is the thing that works. Right. Would that satisfy, would that scratch your itch? There are some products that it would, but then there's others that sometimes I'm, I just want the name brand. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.